Fatigue is a limiting factor in so many sports, especially when it comes to swimming. Now, you might have a great aerobic engine and think of yourself as relatively fit, yet you can jump in the pool, swim a couple of lengths, and suddenly you're gasping for air. Well, today I'm going to be looking at why this happens and helping you to swim further before you get tired. Breathing is probably the first aspect that actually springs to mind when I think of people struggling to maintain their stroke, and it's that either buildup of carbon dioxide or not getting in enough oxygen. So trickle breathing is often the solution here. It's basically when you breathe out gradually throughout the whole of your stroke until you turn your head and then you take your next in breath. If, however, you're holding your breath whilst you're swimming and suddenly letting it all out in the explosive style of breathing as you turn your head, then you're likely to feel that need to gasp for air because you've had a buildup of CO2 and that's what gives that really sort of panicky feeling and will soon tire you out. So if you're not used to this trickle breathing style then just practice it if you're comfortable doing kick maybe pop some fins on and practice purely doing some side kick with your face in the water and then blowing out bubbles constantly until you turn your head and take your in breath. Alternatively you can just practice it in full stroke but concentrate purely on the breathing so you want a constant trickle until you turn your head and then you should be nice and relaxed ready for that inhale. is your body position? Is your body potentially causing more resistance than it needs to? And what about your legs? Are they sinking? If so, it'd be making your kick inefficient, but also acting like a bit of an anchor. Now, if you think of your body like a seesaw, it's a good idea to address what position your head sinks. If your head is too high, your legs are likely to be too low. And then, we come on to breathing. Are you turning your head too far to breathe on each stroke? It's a really common mistake to see in swimmers that as they start to get tired, they naturally turn their head further to try and get more oxygen in. You're not gonna be getting any more oxygen by turning your head further. All you're gonna be doing is disrupting your stroke and in the end, making yourself more tired. So it becomes a vicious circle. And if you watch top level swimmers, you'll notice that they'll only breathe with part of their mouth out the water. In actual fact, you'll probably never see all of their mouth above the water when doing freestyle. Following on from body position, streamlining and flexibility can also have an effect on how far you can swim before you get tired. Now, how streamlined are you? You can do a little bit of an experiment of pushing off the wall and seeing how far you go. And why not try pushing off the wall with your head up and then with your head down, just to notice what a big difference your position can make with that. And can you even get into a properly streamlined position? So that would be with one hand on top of the other and your arms out straight, basically squashing your ears. If you're struggling to get into that position, it could show it's limiting your streamlining but also it can end up affecting your strokes as you get more tired and more fatigued your muscles are likely to get tighter which is going to make your stroke shorter and less efficient so some mobility work could be in order you can do this on dry land and also some strength and conditioning work can complement it too If you're purely looking to swim further without getting tired, then you can look at changing your environment. This isn't gonna actually make you a stronger swimmer, but it will get you the result of going for longer or going further. So head to open water, for example, where you could be using a wetsuit, or maybe you're swimming in the sea, so you're gonna have that added buoyancy, which just makes everything that much easier. And then the water temperature can play a part too. If it's too cold, you'll find that your body is naturally going to have to work harder to keep you warm. And sometimes in extreme heat, that can also be equally exhausting and tiring. And on that topic, you need to consider hydration as if you are dehydrated, that's going to reduce your swim performance. An old one that might sound obvious, could you be going out too hard? Now pacing plays a key role in being able to swim further. If you are going out too fast at the beginning, you're going to straight away feel out of breath and you're unlikely to recover from that and actually find your rhythm. So it's about knowing your ability and knowing your pace and even maybe going out a little bit slower than that, you can always build throughout and that's known as negative split when you swim the second half faster than the first and it's a good way of feeling in control and not having that panic feeling of getting too tired. And when you go for a training session, don't just head there and do a straight 1500 meters, break it up with some rest. So you have a warm up, then you have some rest, then you have a main set of say 100s with rest in between, finishing up with a warm down and making sure that you have enough rest that you know you need. And if you do keep everything at an aerobic pace, you'll naturally be able to swim further. So save the sprints for a different day. Your
your legs have a combination of the largest musculoskeletal muscles in the body. You've got your quads, your hamstrings, and your glutes. Now, if you kick excessively, these muscles are going to be demanding a huge amount of oxygen just to work. Notice when you say sprint for a short bit, the biggest difference in your swim stroke is probably going to be your leg kick. And you'll also notice how quickly you feel out of breath as a result of that. The opposite goes if you're doing pull work or basically eliminating your leg kick, you'll probably find that your heart rate and breathing rate are much lower. So if you are someone who's guilty of doing a lot of kick or you've got an excessively strong kick, try to reduce this. If you're struggling to do that, maybe do some work with a pull boy as well. This one might sound too obvious, but the fitter you are, the further you're going to be able to swim. And having a fit and healthy heart and lungs and a strong aerobic capacity is great. But you do need to note that just because you can cycle and run for miles, it isn't necessarily going to directly correlate to your swimming. Swimming's fitness is very specific, I'm afraid. So it means you're gonna to have to spend more time in the pool, working on building it up and following a training plan. I was a little bit reluctant to include this one as I know it's not as simple as clicking your fingers and making you relax. In actual fact, if you've got someone shouting at you to relax, it's quite likely to have the opposite effect. But if you are really nervous, then you're going to be wasting mental energy and quite often physical energy, which you could actually be using to propel yourself forward. So work on your water confidence, whether that's doing some floating exercises, swimming with others, and using some swim aids, anything that's just gonna make you feel more natural and comfortable in the water. To round it up though, technique has the biggest impact on swimming, so focus on that and you'll see a noticeable difference in how far you can swim before you get tired. And let us know what you feel restricts you with how far you can swim. You can do that in the comments section below. Give us a like and also check out our social media channels and you can follow GTN there as well.